Hi, we're the Silva family. I'm Danielle. I'm Tom. Tom and I have seven kids. When Tom and I got married, Tom brought in two children from his previous marriage. Megan, who's 17. Allison, who's seven. I brought in Cheryl, who's eight. Mackenzie is six. And together we have Riley is two. Kasaya is one and a half. And Caden is six months. I work full time for the Army National Guard. My current duty assignment takes me away from home. I leave Monday mornings. I come home Friday nights. So I'm gone all week. What are you guys doing? People don't really understand what it's like with seven kids. They're stepsisters and we hate each other. You're not going outside. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Husband gone all week and seven kids. You've got your hands full here. Those will kill you. <laughs> Every single child in this house swears. You shut up! <laughs> oh, my word. Megan, her oldest child, there is some distance growing between us. The relationship between my father and I has kind of been indifferent. Sometimes I just don't feel that, that Megan and I are even on the same planet. Go in the other room and play. I yell a lot at the kids. Get your butt back in here. Hang it up where it belongs. I think this is going to be the worst house Super Nanny has gone to. Stupid. Shut up, you idiot. Oh. I'm going to be deployed to Iraq for a year and a half. Danielle is pretty much going to be on her own with these kids. Super Nanny, please come here and help out my family. Super Nanny, I really need your help. You guys are in a crisis. I'm on my way. Well, this is going to be interesting to see exactly how Mum copes with seven kids while Dad's gone for the whole week. Hi, hello. Come on in. Hi. Hiya, pleased to meet you. Hi. Jo. I'm Danielle. Hi, and who's this little one? This is Kasaya. Hi, Kasaya. Say hi. How are you? When I first saw Joe, the first thing I thought was, oh, kids, please behave. <laughs> Don't get me started off by yelling at you when she first walks in the door. And who are all these children over here? <laughs> That's Riley. Can you say hi? hi? Let me have this. Say hi. What's your name? Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Pleased to meet you. When I first saw Joe, I was like, oh, my god, she's finally here. What's your name? Mackenzie. Hi, Mackenzie. Pleased to meet you. I'm Jojo. Allison. Hi, Allison. Pleased to meet you. How are you? Good. She looks Scottish. Scottish. <laughs> this is baby brother. A baby brother. He's the handsomest little baby I've ever seen. And the tiniest. Now he's about like this big. Do you want to quickly show me around the house so I can sure. get a rough idea where everyone sleeps? Mum was giving me a tour of the house, and all I could see was just clothes everywhere. They were in the cupboards, they were spilling out of the drawers, they were on the beds. <coughs> <coughs> There's a great big pile in the hallway. I mean, you just had to kind of shift through the clothes to get from one room to the next. Half the time, I think I am washing clean clothes. Because <laughs> I'll look at something and go, I just folded this. No cleaning's been done at all, and Mum is obviously finding it hard to keep on top of this situation. When we finished the house tour, I wondered where the rest of the girls had gone. Hi. Um, Wabby thinks you are. She thinks you're... She thinks I'm... <laughs> this was one to add to the list when I had Mackenzie come up to me and, um, and say that Riley thought I was... What does that mean, that word? I guess like, uh, like she doesn't like you. It just made me realise these children must hear this language all the time. I think Mum must have panicked a little bit because after showing me how unorganised she was, she went on this frantic cleaning spree in the kitchen. She was scraping with a knife all the dirt and she pulled the dining table out. And she said, all I do is spend my time cleaning. I thought, there's no way. Normally, I would be up until midnight cleaning the house. Danielle is in there mopping the floor, and it looks like it hasn't been cleaned for absolutely months. Whilst 
mum was doing her best maid impersonation, I thought somebody better check on the kids. Mummy, <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. The kids were just beating up on one another, and their potty mouths. <laughs> well, mum, she didn't care at all. Believe my eyes. Riley, who's two years old, was driving around Kasaya, who's a year and a half, in a toy tractor without helmets. Next thing I know, Riley walks through the door alone, and I thought, somebody's missing. So where's Kasaya? Coming up on Super Nanny, it's a mad dash to find Kasaya. Kasaya's stuck. It's oh, okay. Serious situation. And desperation sets in as mom prepares for dad's departure. How am I going to do it by myself? When Super Nanny returns. So where's Kasaya? Oh, she's been left somewhere. So mom and I are, like running everywhere to try and find Kasaya. Kasaya's stuck. Did you get left here? Riley just left Kasaya on the back of the tractor. She's only one and a half years old. Come on. I was shocked that Mum had to go looking for Kasaya. I mean, if she can't manage the kids now, what's she going to do when Dad's gone for 18 months? Stop it. Do not <laughs> unfold those. <laughs> the chaos continued inside whilst Riley was putting up a fight. I let Catherine out of my kitchen now. <laughs> No matter what Mum said, Riley did the opposite. Stop. Go play. Yeah. Don't jump off that couch. No. <laughs> Stop. It. I can't just go and sit down for 20 minutes because it's mommy this, mommy that. Straighten up. <laughs> Come back here, Riley. I just feel like I'm always running around picking up somebody's mess. Hang it up. <laughs> Stopping somebody's fights. If you can't play, then you'll need to come out and sit on the couch. <laughs> Mum's definitely got her hands full with seven kids, but I can tell by the way she's acting, it's really taken a toll on her now. Actually, let me grab you for a moment. I pulled Daniela aside because I was really curious just to see how she was feeling, knowing that Tom was going off to war. Sorry. No, it's OK. It's a serious situation that's about to happen and, um, and change the dynamic of your family and change... It's tough for Mum right now. She's a ball of emotions. She's got her partner who's going off to Iraq. I mean, I, like I told him I got married. I love having a big family. I'm part of a big family. I just didn't think I was going to have to raise them by myself. And it's not fair to the little ones because they don't understand. She's feeling overwhelmed with the fear that she's going to be left to raise the children for a year and a half, possibly, without any support. And I can't blame her for feeling scared and anxious. How am I going to do it by myself? You know, I'm not going to have... That's 18 months, no break. Nobody else to be responsible for them. And it's going to be me. Later on, Megan got home from school and I managed to say hello. Oh, yeah, please meet you. Joe. I love her accent. Just meeting her, she seemed really nice right off the bat. How was school? Yes, it was three her. finals today. Megan is 17 years old, and I know she doesn't have the best relationship with her dad, but I wanted to know how she felt about it. Hi. Let me talk to you while we've got no interruptions. What's that like, then, your relationship with Dad? We, we don't usually talk, so... No, I've... Very understanding. I don't like talking to him because he doesn't grasp what I'm trying to say. He likes twisting it around, which really irritates the crap out of me. What do you need from your dad, Megan? I don't really want anything from him. <laughs> but he's going away, and he's going to be gone for a year and a half. And if I could turn around and say to you that I could make a difference in being able to change your relationship with your dad, 
what would it be? I don't know if he, anything could change. He's one of the most stubborn people. We're both stubborn people. That's why we can't get along. We're going to improve that. And Joe was definitely someone that I felt I could trust. I mean, she seemed like she genuinely cared to hear what I had to say. So I found it easy to confide in her. Let's get it. Megan's relationship with her dad clearly needs a lot of work, but I'm committed in making sure that before I leave, these guys are talking to one another, and more importantly, before Dad goes off. <gasps> right, right, look! Hi, girls. So I spent the whole day with Mum observing, and for the first time, just before we sat down to talk, I met Tom. Nice Pleased to meet you, you Joe. Oh, nice to meet you. Which is different for me. I would love to just grab the pair of you and go through the issues that I feel need to be addressed. Great. Sure. So hopefully we can do that now and sit down and have a talk. <laughs> All right, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get straight to the point because we don't have time. Tom, you're off to Iraq very, very soon. Yeah, it's in three weeks. Danielle, you're going to be left to look after and raise seven children. For how long, Tom? A year to 18 months. And I'm not going to pull any punches with you guys. I walked through the door, Danielle, and I was shocked. Absolutely shocked. There is food all over the place. There are toys in every corner. There are clothes from one room to the other. You've got seven kids. It's not a choice. It's mandatory. You have to be on top of things. I agree. We both agree. But it's not happening. Why isn't it happening? I just don't get any cooperation from the kids. And other than yelling at them or swearing at them, I, they don't listen. What part of you as parents think that it is acceptable to swear in front of your children? Well, I don't think either one of us view it as acceptable. And we don't want our children to use that kind of language. While I was observing, Mackenzie came up to me. And what she said to me was, Riley thinks you're That would be Riley. Riley thinks everything is I'll tell you what, it's totally unacceptable in my book. Everything you're teaching these children, when you swear at them, is how to communicate with others. That's not right, is it? No, it's not. You guys need to raise the bar. You don't see the potential in any of your children at all. You just see the bad things that they do all the time. I want to. I really want to fix it. And I go to bed and cry, because I don't know how to fix it. And that's what I'm trying to bring to the forefront. You will need a strategy of how you are going to cope for when Tom goes off to Iraq. And you need to be pulling out that strength from somewhere. Dad, what's Megan like? Megan is a lot like me. I see a lot of myself in her, a lot of my virtues and a lot of my faults. You've got to open up the gates. She wants to be able to receive your love. She wants to be respected by you. You have the power to resolve that and to make that better. She was very insightful. In just a few short days of observation, she knew my family. So you guys really willing to put in all of that strength, all of that courage, that determination to be able to turn around your family? Yes. I can see that there's hope, and she really can help us, and there's things that we can do. We're not a lost cause, but I'm ready to go. I want my kids to get all they deserve. You ready to start some good hard work then? Yes, we are. So let's go. No time to mess around. Coming up on Super Nanny. Any trash talk, you're going to lose one of these, and they're going to end up in here. When Joe puts the lid on the family's trash talk, I don't know. It's just not that fun to just sit here. <laughs> Mom's not in the mood to play. Your kids want you. When Super Nanny returns. But first, a tip from Super Nanny. Parents and child carers, be mindful of the language you use. Negative phrases like you're horrible, you're just stupid, are all demeaning words that will break a child's spirit and self-esteem. So make sure that you set that example and use positive language around your children.
house seriously needs a routine. It doesn't have one, any shape or form. And if there ever were a house that needed a routine, it was this one. Come over here, come on. Jojo's got something I want to show you. I'm willing to try what Joe's got. I'm really hoping that, um, you know, with the advice she gives us, we can get some kind of routine going and survive until Tom gets back. And not just survive, but flourish while he's gone. So let's move on now that we have that in place. When Joe walked in with a plan and said, this is our schedule and this is what we need to stick to, right away the sergeant me is going, yes, yes, let's go do it. Everybody happy with that? I can't sugarcoat this. The house is a mess. Mum's overwhelmed. She can't do it alone, so the kids are going to have to step up and help her get organised. What we're going to do is have a big clear up. OK, we're going to get organised. Then we're going to use these name cards and we're going to place them on our drawers where our clothes go. Let's go, girls. OK, are we ready? OK, let's go have some fun. We already know which room we go and we already know what cubby we have. Ready? Let's go! The time is there, so when they clean, it's an incentive to beat their best time the next time. It's important that they get lots of praise from you. Mackenzie, keep going. Come on. Mum was having a real hard time trying to motivate Mackenzie. She doesn't want to pick up anything. She wants to sit in the middle of the floor and sit there and help. And you know why? Because this is all so overwhelming for her. Because since day one, they've never picked up a thing. I hate cleaning up. So the way about doing this is to be positive. As long as you can take care of your stuff, all your other sisters are going to have to do that job too. Let's make a headway, OK? It took a little nudging, but the kids caught on and Mum did really well at encouraging them. Good job. Give me five. Let's face it, these are children who have never picked up after themselves. I think they did well. So, let's go outside and have some fun with the kids. After the kids had done some cleaning, I asked Mum to take the kids out to have some fun. But I was so surprised, because whilst they were playing, she was on the side, just watching. I'm not used to sitting outside with them. It's just... <laughs> I don't go to the park. I don't sit there. Tom does. I just so... don't have the patience. It's just not that fun to just sit here. <laughs> So if you don't like sitting here, why don't you get up and play with the kids then? They've got like $2,000 worth of toys sitting in front of them. Yeah, good. I'm really There's pleased about that. anything to do. I'm I mean... really pleased about that. But you know what your kids want? Not two Gs worth of bikes. Your kids want you. What do you expect from them? Because they're giving you, Danielle, everything unconditionally right now, but you're giving nothing back. This materialistic thing needs nothing. You can't buy what I'm giving you, Danielle, because it comes from in here. If you don't step up to the plate and be the mother that you know you're going to have to be, who is going to do it for these kids? What kind of mum are you going to be, Danielle? The kind of mum they deserve. She's not here to tell me I'm a bad mom or do everything wrong. She's here to help. Then why don't we start today? I really want to make it better for my kids. <laughs> Learning to play on their own is not the only thing they've been taught by their mother. Their language is atrocious. Jojo's brought this into this house because there is too much bad words. I'm putting a stop to this immediately with a trash talk technique. Ten mouths. Any trash talk, bad words, cursing, you're going to lose one of these and they're going to end up in here. We want everybody setting good examples here. I was pissed. Sorry, I just used another word. Is that, does that count? Is that a bad word? Pissed. And Mum and Dad are going to give you coupons to do very special things as rewards. Come on, not being able to say shut up without getting one of your mouth taken off? This is for a week. <laughs> so if we see these mouths on the board, then Mum will be dishing out these coupons. If you lose one of them, you don't get it back and you don't get a coupon. You need to go take down a mouth and put it in the jar. Right away, Allison lost a mouth for calling somebody a name. Seven, eight, nine. 
Have nine. Everybody yeah. else has ten. Yeah. <laughs> That's because we didn't say a bad word. She called her a name, and so I made her take down the card. You've got to think about what you say before you say it. I noticed that Riley loves her binky. She's got tons of them. To wean Riley off her binky, I told Mum the story about the binky fairies who need to give the binkies to the babies who need them more. Are you going to tell it, all right? Yeah. Remember, it's big, it's big. Riley, guess what? Passy fairy came. There's babies that need passies. And you got lots and lots of passies you don't need anymore, huh? Can you help Mommy collect all the passies and put them in this bag? OK, let's go look. Look what I found. Yay! Put it in there. And Riley got really excited. She ran around the house looking for all of her binkies. Hey, Riley. Hey, is that all the passies there are? Now, we got to take this outside, and we're going to go tie it in the tree. And the Beaky Fairy's gonna come and get it tonight? I really honestly didn't think the one that was in her mouth was going to be given up. But Joe told her to put the last passy in there. I'm gonna put that pinky in there too. Good girl for cleaning All it. Right. Oh, good job. Oh, for okay. the Binky Fairy. And when you're sleeping, the Binky Fairies are gonna come and they're gonna take the binkies and they're gonna leave you a special present. <laughs> Are you excited? <laughs> I was gonna say, sweetie, come on, let's go. The next morning, we went out to the tree, and then she saw the Binky Fairy had left her her reward, and she was. <gasps> She's so excited. Her little face. Oh, good job. Wow! What's inside? Reach inside and get it. <gasps> That's for big girls and you're a big girl. When Riley saw her new doll, she completely forgot all about the binkies. And I think Mum started to realise that a little praise and encouragement will go a long way. Coming up on Super Nanny. Come on, get those knees up, knees up, you're slacking! Dad aces Joe's basic training. <laughs> Your turn. But misses the target when it comes to complimenting Megan. Tell me I'm pretty or something nice. <laughs> when Super Nanny returns. Even though things have started to change, there's been an overwhelming feeling of negativity in this house. So to boost the positive energy, these children need to hear a lot of praise and encouragement from one another as well as their parents. So I'm sending them out on an obstacle course. And we're going to cheer on the person that is going to be doing the obstacle course. And you know what? Can We're going to get Daddy <laughs> to do it first. Oh, 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 Come on. Get those knees up. <laughs> knees up. You're slacking. If Joe was never in the army, she, she certainly could have been. So you're slacking. Come on. <laughs> Bye. I knew they would be really excited to do this obstacle course. <laughs> and they were cheering on each other, and Mum and Dad got involved. <laughs> It made me smile, because they're not normally cheering each other on. We all had fun. And the most important part was the point that Joe made of everybody encouraging each other. We need to do that as a family. Good! OK, so let's have a circle. Let's just go on our knees so we can form... Now that the family have had a taste of encouragement, I think it would be really good for this family to start saying nice things to one another because they need to hear it. So I'm going to sit them down for the circle of praise. We're going to say one thing, OK, something really nice in a nice tone of voice, and we're going to take turns in doing it. I set the example by passing comment to Cheryl. Cheryl, you're a fantastic <laughs> listener, and I love those inky freckles on your nose and your cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> Riley, you're a very good dancer. <laughs> I can okay. hear like your hair. Okay, <laughs> Daddy, your turn. You have to actually pretend you like something about me. <laughs> Tell me I'm pretty or something nice. <laughs> it was awkward. You could have cut the atmosphere with a knife. And I thought, time out. These two need to talk. 
Come with me, come with me. Take a pew. Let's cut to the chase. Your dad's going off to Iraq. He's going to be away for a year and a half. Life's too short, and I want you guys just to sit and talk about what you feel needs to be resolved. These two had never sat down and communicated with one another. So right away, all of Megan's built-up emotions just started to pour out. I don't even know how I'm supposed to feel about you leaving. I can't imagine what kind of... what kind of anxieties you're going through right now, what kind of worries you have, knowing where I'm going. I mean, that just tops off everything else that I worry about and think about all the time. I mean, and as, as nice as it, as it would be to go and, you know, talk to you, I can't because every time I tell you that, oh, I made this choice and it kind of wasn't the best one, it's, oh my God, what a bad kid I am. And that's not fair. That's not the message I'm trying to give you. If I disagree with the choice you make, it doesn't mean that I think you're a bad kid. I have to hope that everything I've taught you about life is going to apply. You know, you will always be my baby girl. Uh -huh. Sometimes I wonder. Today was a very important moment for me with my daughter. Megan and I both said things to each other that needed to be said for a long time. And if they didn't get said today, weren't going to be said. I love you. I love you too. With Joe leaving, I'm going to try to get the kids to keep the positive talk up. Yeah. I think we've all gotten so used to her being there and kind of being a, you know, cheerleader. OK. Take care of yourself. I'm going to do my best to keep it together. Remember, this is about empowering you. So use everything. Who knows, but I tell you, I just hope that Danielle just sticks to everything and puts 100% in. Coming up on Super Nanny. Open the f door. When mom thinks the cameras are dark. Instead of unlocking the door, you stood there and went, who is it? Her true colors come to life. You know that I'm watching you. When Super Nanny returns. But first, a tip from Super Nanny. Parents, it's so important to spend time bonding with your children. So, for example, take one night a week where you all stick to that date and come together as a family. But remember, turn off that television and your computer and switch off the cell phone and start having some fun. Mum's going to be on her own for 18 months, so let's just see how she gets on with this practice run. You did it in 33 minutes yesterday. See if you can get faster. You ready? Set, go! Great, you're using the task timer technique. White baskets are clean laundry. Come over here and put your clothes in the basket. Mom, keep it upbeat. Try and make it real fun for them. Saya, please don't. This is yours. <laughs> Excuse me? Did you just say a naughty word? Did you just say a naughty word? You need to go take down a mouth and put it in the jar. Right here. Put your mouth in that jar. Good. Stay on top of that trash talking. Hurry. Way to fire up the kids, Mum. Hey, 30 minutes today. That was pretty good. I love that positive energy. That was very impressive. Let's just see if Mum can keep up that enthusiasm. I don't care what you want. They're hers. Can I have one? Can I open it? What's going on here? Where are you in the routine, Danielle? Mum, you've been on that couch for hours. That's ridiculous. Oh, I think that Danielle's forgot that my surveillance cameras are still running. Is that you banging the door? Open the door. I can 
cannot believe what I have just heard from you. Mackenzie, I don't want to hear you. You are just as guilty because instead of unlocking the door, you stood there and went, Who is it? Who is it? You both are grounded. You're scary, Mum, and you've lost it. I asked her what the f was going through her f head to lock the door with that baby inside it. In front of your two-year-old. My trash truck thing went right out the window. Tom's leaving soon, and your lack of effort is not helping you or your children. OK, let's take a look at the footage and see what we've got here. We're going to pick up all the toys in here, and then we're going to put our clean clothes in our basket. OK, 30 minutes today. That was pretty good. A much more cheery mum there, which is marvellous. Good to see. Open the door. You both are grounded. I mean, is that what goes on then, without the cameras around? Because, I mean, you know, you know that I'm watching you. Not normally. I have surveillance cameras in this yeah. house, so I, I watch you when I choose to do so. You were scary. And if I were them, I wouldn't have opened the door. Because I don't know what I would have got. I was very angry. <laughs> and you showed loss of control there. And that loss of control made you very mean, very angry. And it was a very ugly picture. I should have calmed down first and then dealt with him. Mackenzie, I don't want to hear you. You are just as guilty because instead of unlocking the door, you stood there and went, Who is it? Like it mattered who it was. I will not allow you, Danielle, to continue like this with the children and think that it's okay. You are going to make an emotional scar on these kids if you do not change your attitude. I know it's not OK. Tom, I'd like to hear what you're saying, because I'm sitting here talking to Danielle very straight about what I'm seeing with your children as well, and I'm not happy with this. We feel that that is the worst kind of parenting. That was a really bad night. <laughs> OK, but from this point on, we have no excuses, OK? Now we've had somebody come in and give us a clue. Let's move on with this footage. Why, she knew them. They're hers. Say night-night, Mommy. That routine was placed up on your wall because you needed a routine. A routine's hard, though, especially with everybody of around. Of it's because, hard, because we you know, didn't somebody... have a routine before. But it's, it's not going to get better if we don't try. Uh, lack of effort will always cause failure. And that's, that's not acceptable. But you've got to try. And we're not seeing effort here. And I think this is about you. And how you're going to survive with these children when Tom's gone. The children never got an apology from you with the way you behaved. We need to change this as soon as possible. So. Are we ready? If she did nothing else in the house, that was enough. She made me think about how I affect my children. And you close that DVD and let's go. Coming up on Super Nanny, Dad's off to war. This is a watch that, um, that my grandfather gave to me. But can he and Megan make peace before time runs out? When Super Nanny returns, Time is running out, and it's important that if we're to make any progress here, that Mum sits these kids down and explains that she's made some mistakes. The other night when Mommy yelled at you guys, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have yelled at you guys. Okay? And it's really hard to admit you're wrong to your kids, because I was ashamed of the way I acted. Mommy's going to try not to yell anymore, okay? okay and try to be a better mommy. I think it took a tremendous amount of courage for Danielle to sit down in front of the entire family and admit she was wrong, and then to tell them that, that she was going to do better. Mommy wants to be a good mommy. 
And she wants you guys all to know that she loves you. I could tell that she really had seen her faults and she really did mean to do better. I have to be a better parent. I have to be mom and dad to these kids for the next year and a half. And that's gonna be hard, but I can do it. I have to do it. I need to do it for them. I love you too. I love you too. The next order of business was to see exactly how the girls had done with the trash talk technique whilst I was gone. Yeah, Mackin. Danielle said, ooh, you said the word three times. So I just figured it was easier just to take all the mouths down at that point. It's, it's hard to keep up with. Cheryl Mackenzie. Me and Cheryl have all of our mouths on the board. Alison, you got two off. Yeah, so you're gonna try very hard Smiling. next week. I barely even use bad words. Only two times. And bad words are bad. That's why they're bad. Mummy and Danny, what does Cheryl get as her reward? One special gift. Well done, well done. Good job. Oh, well done. The language in the house has completely reduced. Cheryl and Mackenzie have put 100% effort into thinking before speaking. I got a coupon today because I had all my mouths on the board, and when I go to Disneyland on Monday, I get to bring something back, a souvenir. Megan's absolutely petrified that her dad's going to go off to war and he's not going to come back, and that must be just absolutely horrific for a teenager. And I suggested to Dad that it would be lovely if he could leave Megan something of sentimental value and make her realise how much she's very much loved and how special she is. This is a watch that, um, that my grandfather gave to me. Anytime that you know you're going off to a war, there's that chance that you may not come home. And so for me, this was a terrific opportunity, knowing that this may be the last chance that I ever get to get it right. I want you to keep it for me while I'm gone because I intend to come back for it. But while I'm gone, I want you to hold this for me. I saw that watch and I knew what it was because I knew it meant something to him. I didn't know he was leaving, so it meant something to me. <laughs> it's so hard. I hope you come back to be able to take this. I plan on it. I have so much to come back for. I'll be fine. If Joe hadn't come into my house and opened up that window of opportunity for Megan and I to come to an understanding with each other, then I would have left, not having made peace with my oldest daughter. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. Jojo's going home now. Cheryl, come and give me a hug. The Silver family was a very challenging family, but I do feel the outcome has been tremendous because Mum has become aware of what she needs to do in order to be a better mother. The children are happier because they're getting more praise from their parents and more attention. Dad has really stepped up. Be careful, yeah. What's so amazing about the way Joe works, there's no magic in what Joe does. She comes in and she shows you who you really are. And that's what I really want to thank Joe for. Give me a hug. I want to thank Joe for coming in and showing me how to be a better mother to my girls. Precise. No doubt there's been some positive changes with this family, even though they are still walking that long road. I think Danielle's accepted the fact that Tom's going to leave, and she now has found the confidence to be a better mother, and she's more determined to make it work. <laughs> Joe gave my family the confidence to be the kind of family we've always wanted to be. Everybody gets one piece of paper. My girls are getting along a lot better now. Do you want me to show you what you can do? I already see that the kids are yelling less. I'm not raising my voice as much. And now we got to put this back with the games. There's a lot less cussing in the house. No more back. 
What? It has turned into a house with more love in it. <laughs> it's almost like a peace between everybody. <laughs> My children, they're miracles. I hug them more and give them more compliments. And each one of them is special, and each one of them needs to feel that way. Yay! Nice and cool, cool now. I'll spike you. Go! If I can leave knowing that my children are in good hands, that's really important to me. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thank you for coming, Joe. Bye! Thank you, Jojo.